Hello everyone, welcome to Erdas Imagine Tutorials. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to perform supervised classification using Erdas Imagine. Let me start the demonstration by first loading the input data. Right, this is my data. Let me fit it to frame. Okay. Now I'll change the band combination to 543, which is the false color composite band combination for Landsat 8. Please note this data what I've taken is derived from Landsat 8 multispectral sensor. So let me go to the multispectral tab here. I'll change the sensor type to Landsat 8 multispectral and the band combination, which is RGB, I'll change it to 543. So R will be band 5. G will be band 4 and B will be band 3. As I said, this is a false color composite band combination for Landsat 8 data. Let us now start with the supervised classification. To perform supervised classification, go to the raster tab here. Then within that you have an icon for supervised. Click on the drop down menu and select the very first option which is supervised classification. Once you click on it, you'll be redirected to a small window, which in fact says supervised classification. There are multiple boxes available here. The first box is for the input. As I already have opened my input data, that is by default taken as the input raster file. The second box here is the most important file. Here in this box, I'm supposed to provide the file that contains the training data for this particular study area. Please note in my previous video, I have illustrated how to perform signature collection using Adas Imagine. If you have not yet watched that video, please go ahead and watch it so that you can have a signature file before you perform supervised classification. In fact, it is compulsory to have a signature file to perform supervised classification in Adas Imagine. You can watch my video on signature collection by clicking on the link shown in the top right corner right now or I'll leave the link of the same in the video description below. For this demonstration, I have made sure I have the signature file ready. So I'm going to now click on this folder icon and browse to the location where the signature file is located. Right, so this is my signature file. This is in the format .sig. Select that then click on OK. The next row here is dedicated for output paths. The first one here is for the output itself, which is the classified file. So click on this folder icon here, browse to the location where you want to store the classified image. Right, now I will create a separate folder for storing the classified files. So I'm going to create a folder here. I'll call it as classified data. Right, now within that folder, I'll store the classified file. I'll call the file also as classified file. Please note that it has imagined by default sets the file type as .img. Once you are given the file name, then you can click OK. The next one here is also very important. This is to create a distance path. This is absolutely optional, but I would highly suggest you to create distance files because this provides very good information when you are trying to analyze the classified images. I will not be explaining how to analyze a distance file as of right now because this is a very generic and very simple tutorial on performing supervised classification. In one of my next videos, I will be explaining the distance based classifiers and there I will illustrate the importance of distance files. As of now, let us just understand that distance files are important in supervised classification. So click on this checkbox and give the name for the distance file. I'll store the distance files at the same location as where I have stored the classified file, but I'll name the file as classified distance file. Okay, so once that is done, click OK. Here in the classified file, you have a button here which says attribute options. Click on it. 
and you can now see that we have several attributes that are derived from the signature file. You can select any of these attributes and the classification will be made based upon these attributes. However, I suggest you not to select any of them and let the classifier automatically consider the best features for classification. So I'm not going to select any of them. I'll simply close this window. Coming down here, you have a checkbox for fuzzy classification. If you want to perform soft classification or fuzzy classification of the image, then you can click on this checkbox and that would enable this particular box which indicates the number of classes per pixel. You can vary this number anywhere between 1 and to a maximum value of the total number of classes that are selected during the signature. For example, during signature collection, I have selected 7 classes on the land surface. Then for fuzzy classification, the number of classes per pixel can vary from 1 to 7. Down here, we have the decision rules. This is the most important part in supervised classification. We have two type of decision rules. The first one is called as a non-parametric decision rule. And the second one what we have here is a parametric decision rule. What is important to us here is the parametric decision rule. So let me now first discuss on this particular menu. So if you click on this drop down, you will note that Erdas Imagine provides five classifiers to perform supervised classification of the data. They are maximum likelihood, Mahalnobis distance, minimum distance, spectral angle mapper, and lastly, spectral correlation mapper. All of these classifiers are hard classifiers. However, please note, when you are performing hard classification, you should not select the fuzzy classification option. The moment you select this, then you are performing a soft classification, which instead of using the Boolean logic, will use the fuzzy logic. Let me now concentrate in this video mainly on hard classifiers. So I am not going to select the fuzzy classification option for my demonstration. Further, in the parametric rule, let me select the maximum likelihood classifier as the parametric rule. Coming back here, we have what is called as non-parametric rule. Let us understand what is a non-parametric rule and what are the options we have under the non-parametric rule. To know better about what is non-parametric rule, I will go for the help menu here. And that takes you to the supervised classification help menu in the Erdas Imagine help. Under this, we have decision rules. As the help menu indicates here, we have both non-parametric and parametric decision rules. Let us understand when non-parametric and parametric decision rules should be used. If the training set information is absolutely exclusive, and as I say exclusive, the training data do not overlap with each other, then you can simply use the parametric decision rules to perform supervised classification. However, on the other hand, if the training data is not exclusive, that is the training data overlaps one another, then it is compulsory to use non-parametric decision rules to perform classification. To explain more about what is this exclusivity in the signature, I am going to simply zoom into a certain pixel here. Let us now look into this particular portion on the data. When I was performing signature collection, all the red colored pixels were selected as belonging to forest. Coming to this particular portion where you have a shaded part of green, we selected this particular area as belonging to barren land. If you zoom into the boundaries between these two classes, you will note that there are a large number of pixels which are neither completely red nor completely green. These type of pixels are called as mixed pixels. If you have selected these pixels during the signature collection, then you must use the non-parametric rule to classify the mixed pixels. On the other hand, if your signature only consists of pure pixels and does not contain any mixed pixels, 
then you need not use non-parametric rules for classification. However, please note, in my experience of classifying remote sensing data, I have found that it is very difficult to find whether you have selected any mixed pixels unless you perform classification and then accuracy assessment. Therefore, as a safe step, I would definitely suggest you to use either the parallel pipe or the feature space non-parametric rule even though you have collected pure pixels during signature collection. For this demonstration, I will be using parallel pipe rule as the non-parametric rule. Well, with that, now we have specified all the settings for supervised classification. Please note, here you have an option to provide area of interest. However, the data that I have currently considered is already being subset exactly to the boundary I wanted to perform classification on. Therefore, I will not be using the AOI file. Right, let me now start the classification by clicking on the OK button here. Okay, now as you can see here, the classification is 100% complete. Let me now close this and now I will open the classified image. Okay, as you can see, there are two files here. The first one is the classified file. The second one is the classified distance file. As I said, distance file is used only for analysis and for any thematic analysis, we will use the classified file. So select that, then click on OK. Right, so this is my classified file. If you want to know what are the different classes that I have set here, you can click on this plus button next to the classified file. Please note that the classified file has a small X mark, which probably indicates the pyramids are not built for this. So right click on that file and click on correct alert problem and click on OK in the clear layer alert window. Once that is done, you can see that X mark is gone. Now coming to the classes, you can see that I have set four classes here. The pixels with the red color in the classified map they represent vegetation. Pixels with cyan color, which are shown here, they represent scrubland. Pixels with dark green color, as what you can see here, they represent agricultural fields. And lastly, pixels with blue color, they represent water body. For this demonstration, I have restricted the number of classes to four so that we can easily understand the classes as well as differentiate them on the thematic map. When you are performing classification, I highly suggest you to go through the study area thoroughly before you collect signature and collect signature for every possible land cover identified on the study area. Right, once the classification is done, the next step is to analyze the accuracy of this classification. However, I will not be discussing the accuracy assessment in this video. I will do that in my next video. So stay tuned. Well, with that, we have come to the end of this video. If you found this video to be informative, kindly like and share this video and subscribe to my channel for more tutorials on LDAS Imagine. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.